Welcome to the Skies Over Colorado for June 2021. I'm Staff Astronomer John Ensworth of the Cherrywood Observatory, Little Thompson Observatory, and Longmont Public Media. We have some quick news this month. First, we have a possible false planet. It's a very interesting planet and a very interesting star system. This is Bernard's star. This is a very close star to our own stellar system, Sol, only six light years away. It's technically the fourth nearest star outside the three in Alpha Centauri, but since the other three are in the same system, this is pretty significant. It's a few billion years older than our sun. With its own intrinsic velocity through space and its nearness to Earth, it is the fastest moving star through the nighttime sky, moving about 10.3 arc seconds per year. The planet that was estimated to be about 0.4 astronomical units, that's the Earth-Sun distance of 93 million miles from Bernard's star, would still be much colder than Earth because Bernard's star is such a cool, small, dim star. This planet was estimated at three times Earth's mass with a year of about 232 days, Earth days. This is an artist's rendition of what this planet might look like with a very dim and very red star up in the sky. Jack Lubin, graduate student, University of California, Irvine, thinks that stellar activity might be mimicking a planet orbiting Bernard's. Using the Hobby Eberly Telescope at the McDonald Observatory in Texas, Combining 856 days of spectrographic observations and 20 years of prior observations, thinks that this planet may not actually be there and is making that case. China makes it to Mars. Of course, we've covered the goings-on of NASA mission to Mars recently with helicopter and all. The Zurong rover now has landed in Utopia Planitia on May 17th. That's 5.18 Mountain Time in the morning. It was announced after the fact. We were kind of surprised that they were doing it. A bit of a secret there. We have the latitude and longitude of its landing location and there is a rover that they are deploying. So more science from Mars can't be a bad thing. Up in the International Space Station, a, I wouldn't say near miss, but a near catastrophe occurred where some object moving at high velocity hit the Canadian robotic arm. This, there is a hole in the, what's called the Canada Arm 2. And it could, this could have been a meteor, could have been sp space debris from another satellite or a fragment of one coming through. Relative velocities for objects in orbit can be pretty fantastic. It, as you can see over on the right here, it did puncture a hole through the insulating heat resistant material around the arm, but none of the communication systems or mechanical components inside seem to be damaged. They do have some missions planned with this in the near future and they think they'll, those will proceed as normal. We have seen holes appear in the solar panels from similar impacts. There are were already plans for a Canada Arm 3 uh, that were started in 2019. I could not find the deploy date for that or launch date for that. All right, let's take a look at big star parties in the age of COVID, at least in the time coming out of the age of COVID. The Grand Canyon Star Party in Arizona here at the beginning of June is still planned to be virtual. So check out that, Google that. Bryce Canyon Festival is going ahead in person June 9th through 12th. So they are um, probably looking at the CDC guidelines for people being able to be near each other in an outside setting. 
But the Cherry Spring Star Party is cancelled. In July, the Green Bank Star Quest is cancelled. The Sangre Star Festival, Westcliff, Colorado, has gone virtual. And Golden State Star Party and Table Mountain Star Parties in California and Washington, respectively, are cancelled. Hopefully we'll see this start turning around pretty quickly. Your Astro 101 lesson for this month comes from Bernard Starr, and that is discussing briefly proper motion. All the stars in the galaxy are moving, and moving very quickly. Uh, but being very far away, we don't really notice most of those motions, except for in cases like this. Stars are traveling around the galaxy, all orbiting around the central core in the black hole there, like swarms of bees. And they're basically moving together, but they do have some of their own velocity, either side to side, or a little faster or slower than the crowd. His example, I can, we can take a look at the Big Dipper over time. Going back 50,000 years, the Big Dipper was only vaguely recognizable. Presently, the Big Dipper looks like this. These teal arrows show the motion of each individual star. And 50,000 years from now, it'll look more like the bottom picture. These are large time scales, and humans living only about 100 years, we don't really notice this. Right, let's take a look at the sky above your backyard for this month. We start the month with a last quarter moon, June 2nd, in the morning sky, new moon on the 9th, first quarter in the evening sky, June 17th. And if you're planning on some camping and hiking at the end of the month, you'll have lots of moonlight to help you with a nighttime hike. Okay, at the planets, faster Venus is rising up in the southwestern sky week to week, month to month right now. So it, with its gaining altitude, it is staying up longer after sunset and becoming more visible. It may look like a, an airplane coming in uh, for a eventual approach and landing at Denver if you look in the southwestern sky. It is now setting about two hours after sunset. Mars, on the other hand, is moving slower around the sun than we do. So we are passing it and it is sinking in the southwestern sky and is now setting about three hours after sunset. Venus and Mars will pass each other in the coming months and then Mars will vanish behind the glow of the sun. Taking a look at the evening chart, there's the sun just going down, here's Venus emerging from the glow, Mars not too far above. On this particular night of the 15th, the moon will be just above them. Around midnight, if you stick strictly to midnight, the only thing you'll see in the nighttime sky is Saturn, which rises around 11 p.m. and be very low in the southeast sky. If you take a look at that chart, we are pretty much planet free for anything that you can see with binoculars or a telescope because you can't see Pluto easily. Here is Saturn just coming up. In the pre-dawn sky, Jupiter and Saturn are putting on a great show. Saturn, as I just said, rises about 11, and Jupiter is only an hour and a half behind it at about 12.30 in the morning. Neptune is now rising at about 1 a.m., and Uranus rises about 3 a.m. Mercury is pretty much impossible. It put on a great show last month, but now it's... Uh, down in the glow of the sun once again and coming out in the morning sky already. Remember, it goes all the way around the sun every 88 days. Here's our busy morning sky right at sunrise. Here's Saturn way over here, already past the meridian, this line from south to north, dividing the east and western half of the sky from each other. There's Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, and Mercury too close to the sun to be seen. Sunrise and sunset times do not change much this month at all. June is the month where the sun is moving more 
to the along the east-west axis than um, it does the other months of the year. So sunrise and sunset are virtually unchanged. The altitude of the sun same goes from 72 and a half up to a maximum of 73.7 on June 20th, the summer solstice. So summer begins at 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time on the 20th. On that day, we have our longest day at 14 hours, 59 minutes, just about 15 hours of daylight with the sunrise at 5.32 a.m. and sunset at 8.31. Our feature object, well, we've gone through everything in the solar system planet-wise, so let's take a look at the sun itself. It's about 18, 8 minutes, 19 light seconds away from us. It's a G2 type 5 spectral type star, and it's about a half degrees in, in diameter, which is very similar to the size of the moon, making eclipses interesting with uh, solar eclipses being anything from a deep total to annular where the Sun is visible all the way around the moon in maximum eclipse at 432,000 plus miles radius that makes its diameter just about 110 times Earth's diameter you can also put about 1.3 million Earth's inside the Sun to fill it it's the definitely the biggest thing around it easily can swallow all the planets and have lots of space left over. At the surface, which is the photosphere, which is still close to a vacuum, uh, but it looks like a surface to us, gravity is 55 times Earth's. The mass of the Sun is 333,000 times that of the Earth, and our solar system is 29,000 light years from the galactic core. Uh, it's middle-aged, it's 4.6 billion years old with about 5 billion years to go depending on when you kind of consider it to have died. It will swell up as a red giant swallowing Mercury, Venus and probably Earth uh, at a much later stage. As it ages, it is getting 1% brighter every 100 million years. Your Colorado Observing Challenge We'll go back to Bernard Star again because you can see it from here. You do need a, at least a small telescope or binoculars to do so. Uh, middle of the month, June 15th, if you go out at 1.22 a.m., it's right on the meridian and right above the equator. So it's well placed. Down in the southern sky, you'll see the teapot of Sagittarius and the fish hook of Scorpius. And this constellation is called Ophiuchus. It kind of looks like a big house, like a kid's drawing of a house. Here's the roof. If you go off of the roof, maybe have a little Eve right here. We're going to zoom in on this Eve. There's the Eve right there at the edge of the roof. And using this little bright star right above this joint in the Eve, we're going to make some imaginary shapes here. That's a nice triangle up to it, and then it's going straight horizontally over from the corner of the roof. There's Bernard Star, very dim red. It's this little dim red one up here. Not the bright one down here, but this really reddish one. Because it is such a cool, small star, the reddish color will be very noticeable. Taking a look at astronomy events near Longmont. Well, we're still coming out of COVID, like I said earlier, so things are still canceled. June 17th, probably, if I've got their pattern correct, figuring um, from last month's uh, meeting, Longmont Astronomical Society probably will have something online, but nothing is on their site at the time that I put this together and I'm recording this video. But what is on their site is the first live public star night under the stars with telescopes out at the boulder county parks and open space rabbit mountain star party this is july not june july 16th from 8 15 to 10 15. they do want you to register so there are a limited number of slots so things are not quite normal yet but definitely a step in the right direction 
Little Thompson Observatory is closed through June 2021. They still have virtual visits being offered, so take a look at starkids.org for that. Estes Park Memorial Observatory is still not having public star nights, but they are having small groups by reservation, and all the details are located at angelsabove.org. Northern Colorado Astronomical Society on June 3rd will have a webinar speaker, Ron Hernack, talking about meteorites, a collector's perspective. That's a direct copy and paste from their site. So if I spelled his name incorrectly, it's on their site. The Fisk Planetarium, they, now that they're in summer, seem to have both their live events and observatory events uh, on hold for now. So if you are curious, you can check out colorado.edu, SBO, or colorado.edu Fisk to see if anything is starting up in the summer. And finally, looking at desktop software in my suggestion list, another freebie that's really good quality is Carte du Ciel, and star chart. Looking directly at their description on their own website, the program enables you to draw star charts, making use of the data in many catalogs of stars and nebulae, in addition to the position of planets, asteroids, comets that are shown. Uh, you can make different star maps, you can color different things, There's, everything is configurable to make the map look the way you want it to. Here's some examples of sections of these star charts. You can plot positions, orbits of things, date and time stamp them. For instance, comets or asteroids you're interested in looking at over a month. And the URL is kind of a mess. So if you do Carte du Ciel in Google, you'll get it right away. It is free and available for the Linux, Windows, and Mac OS platforms. If you have any additions, corrections, any comments to make, send an email to johnansworth at gmail.com. Put in Skies Over Colorado in the subject line so I can find it easily. Again, this has been the Skies Over Colorado for June 2021. I'm staff astronomer John Ensworth. Keep looking up. <laughs>